the wilderness. Okay, the preparation. It says in Matthew 4, 1, that Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Now, right off the bat, we need to learn something very, very important. That we get into situations that we don't like, and we immediately think, uh-oh, you know, this is, where's God in all of this? Well, it was probably God that led you there. His promise is to lead you in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He said he would never leave you nor forsake you. But he will often take us some strange places, at least strange to our natural man, right? It's very much like the Red Sea. Yes. You know, the Red Sea, if you look at it in the natural, it's probably the most, the biggest predicament that the people of God faced. I mean, here they are, they have been released by the Pharaoh out of that bondage, out of slavery, and, and they wind up at the Red Sea, an impassable, impossible, impossible barrier, that body of water. It was God that got them free from the Pharaoh. Yes. It was the Lord God Almighty who led them to that Red Sea. Yes. It was the Lord who spoke that Red Sea into existence. Right. Everything about this is it's the handiwork of God because he has purpose in everything. And as I say, he leads us in, you know, he may lead you in places that you weren't expecting. He led Jesus God the Father, the Holy Spirit, led Jesus into the wilderness. And we always tend to think of the wilderness as kind of, you know, that bad place. A barren, empty place. Barren. Uh, and, I, and I've shared this with you before, you know, that we've traveled and lived as missionaries. Mark was with us when we lived down in Belize. Mm -hmm. And we lived out in the bush for, for quite some time. That's a wilderness. Mm -hmm. I grew up in New York City in Manhattan. My dad was in a hotel business. I mean, I grew up in Midtown Manhattan living in hotels. and Everywhere you look, you see the, the work of man. Well, you go into the bush, everywhere you look, you see the, the handiwork of God. And it's a, a spectacular thing if you are moving and walking in, in the spirit of God, right? And I've said this before, too. When it came to Red Sea, God delivered them at the Red Sea. You know, many of the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us out of them all. He leads us always in triumph in Christ Jesus. That's his plan. When you get into a place that you thought, what am I doing here? What you ought to be doing there is giving thanks in all things and praising God. Okay? He's saying, what's in this for you, Lord? What's in this for you, Lord? Because the only difference between a problem and an adventure is your attitude. Amen. And if you have an attitude of praise, if you have an attitude of thanksgiving, all of a sudden your problem becomes that adventure mm -hmm. that, that will bless you and bring glory to God. Hallelujah. So anyhow, you know the story of Jesus in the wilderness, I, 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 I hope. You know, God leads him into the wilderness and the devil shows up to tempt him. And he, he attacks Jesus with his wiles when Jesus, after 40 days of fasting, got hungry, Satan attacks him and says, you know, just turn that stone into, into bread. Mm -hmm. And Jesus responds with the word and says, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And then the devil comes along and says, well, you know, he's on a high place and says, if you throw yourself, throw yourself down. It's, you know, it's written, God will give you his angels charge concerning you. That's an attack on the pride of Jesus. You know, show, you know, that you're, you're this particular person that you, you, you think you are or you claim to be. And Jesus said, well, it's also written, you should not tempt the Lord your God. It's also written because you see the word of God or the scriptures, let me put it that way, the scriptures can be mishandled and mismanaged even by the devil. That's right. And Paul admonished his son in the faith, Timothy, to rightly divide. divide the word of God. The word, the scriptures can be wrongly divided. The word of truth, he said. The scriptures can be mishandled and misused. Mm -hmm. This is why you need to test everything and make sure that what is spoken is according to the whole word. All right? And then finally... He takes Jesus to this high place and shows him all of the glory, all of the riches of the world. And says, if you bow down to me, you can have all of this. 
There's a prosperity message for you, hey? Is it not true today that it is still that great temptation of the deceitfulness of riches? Jesus said you shall worship the Lord your God and him only. The thing we need to recognize there is Jesus was victorious in all of this because he stood fast on, proclaimed, and used the one thing that he had to fight the devil, the word of God. Though the earth shall move and change And the mountain move to the sea I shall not be afraid The Lord of hosts is with me Be still and